Are you interested in, or have you ever tried learning form or T-spline modeling? In this multi-part series of tutorials, you will learn the fundamentals of form modeling, how to input, calibrate, and manipulate a canvas, create basic, intermediate, and complex forms easily, and then finish a project that can be printed on a 3D printer. Welcome to the Learn It channel, forms and T-spline models for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create this piggy bank that can be printed on your own 3D printer. There are a host of tutorials out there that teach about form or T-spline modeling as it's otherwise known as, but I found that most teach theory and concepts or go extremely fast. We will try our best with this tutorial to make it informative with just discussing what's necessary to get you on your path of learning form or T-spline modeling without being overly detailed or complex. Future tutorials will be made which will discuss more and more complex details, but for now, we will start with this simple model. Well, it might seem simple in appearance, but in actuality, there are a lot of features with this model which are more on the intermediate side of things, but regardless, we will discuss the fundamentals which will help you to design everything that you see on your screen now. So first of all, let's just talk about a brief explanation of form or T-spline modeling. If we move up to the toolbar under our solid tab, we will see create form. And just hover over that and it says enters form mode and inserts a form feature into the timeline. Use form tools to create and edit history free bodies by pushing and pulling on vertices, edges and faces. This is commonly referred to as T-spline modeling. So Put simply, what's the difference between this and solid modeling? Well, solid and surface modeling concepts use more traditional design tools, whereas form or T-spline modeling is similar to, well, what we could liken to sculpting clay. So like sculpting clay, we can tell someone else all of our knowledge, but there is a huge benefit for a person to actually try the sculpting themselves. So this tutorial is not designed to teach you the perfect way of designing using forms or T-splines. Rather, it is designed for you to actually try it yourself so that you can start to understand the basic concepts of this kind of modeling. So I'd like to encourage you with the same principle I'd encourage my students, which is watch the whole tutorial first and then replay it while actually following each step. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new design. And right off the bat, we will save it and we will name this our piggy bank. Now it's important to note the location and something that I've encouraged my students to do rather than just save all of their files in one location, for example, the admin projects or another folder to actually do some good file maintenance and to save it in a location that you will be able to find that part easier in the future. So I have created it under lesson 13 piggy bank for tutorial. And the reason why we're going to save it in that location is we're actually going to put our picture files in the same folder. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And to find these picture files, I will put a link down in the description to this video below where you can go to download them. And you will use that for the beginning step of creating your form model. So let's close our data panel. Now, the first thing we're going to do is insert a canvas. Now, as we go to that canvas, you will see that it says places an image on a planar face or sketch plane, select a face, then select an image to import. Now, just look at the image that it shows there. Did you know that extraordinarily complex models such as a car are often created from sketches, from 2D sketches? We might think that's overly simple where we just want to get right into the 3D and assume that it's so complicated to do. But in reality, we actually start with 2D sketches. Sometimes 3D artists will start off with a napkin where they've done a little drawing during their lunch or something like that. Well, they can import a picture of that napkin into Fusion 360 and create something amazing through it. So we're going to do that. We're going to insert a canvas, but we're not going to insert it through this method right here, we're gonna to go to our data panel. In our folder here, we'll go upload. And we can drag and drop the picture files or the images into this particular folder. Let's do that. You can see once I drag and drop, there are our three images and we can upload them. 
Great, so we can see that we've uploaded them. Now the images haven't refreshed yet in the folder and that's okay. We can close our data panel and now let's go insert canvas. And right there in the folder that it defaults to because that's in our data panel, you'll see our images right there. So let's first of all, select our piggy bank right. Now we need to select the plane. Let's select the right view, which is our YZ plane. And there you can see is an image of our piggy bank. Now let's just go and learn a couple things about canvases first of all. Let's just go down the list of our dialog window here. Canvas opacity, we can lower the opacity and we can put the opacity at a higher level which makes it less opaque. But let's just bring it back to 50. But the thing that I want to show right now are all these little tools that show up when we insert an image. So we can rotate it if need be. We can move it up and down. We can flip our images. We can move our images using the square right here, which moves it both in X and Y. I'm just going to reset that to zero. And now we also have some scaling bars. So we can scale it in Z. Just bring that back down to one, which is normal. We can scale it in X. I'll put that down to one as well. Or we can scale it in both directions. Great, let's go okay. So right now, our piggy bank has no defined dimension to it. So we need to add some sort of dimension. Right now, it's probably quite small. It probably wouldn't be able to hold any money in it at all. And it would be probably too difficult to print on a 3D printer. So we have to calibrate it. We can do that in our browser. Let's go to our canvases and we right click on that image and go calibrate. If we hover our mouse, the first thing it says is pick the first point on the canvas plane. So let's assume that from the front of the body to the back is six inches. Right now it's only 0.8 inches. So let's do that. Six inches. Our image becomes a lot bigger, but now it's calibrated properly so that when we actually create the 3D model, it will be six inches from front to back. Now you might be asking yourself, why not just make it a very small model and then scale it later on to whatever we would want? Well, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't, especially when we start getting into things like threads or other things like that, the scaling might not work or function the way that we think it will function. So that's why we make our canvas the right size right from the get-go. So the next thing we're going to do is add a canvas image for the front view of our piggy bank. So let's go insert canvas and we'll insert the front. And here we'll pick our XZ plane. Now we don't need to actually calibrate this because we've already calibrated one image. So all we're going to do is grab that scaling bar and move the image or scale it so that it is in line with the other image. So I'm gonna go here to the front and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I can see here the top of the body of the side view or the right view is almost the same as this. So I have to make it a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna look at the feet as well. Let's just look at the feet. I can see that I should probably drop this image down just a little bit, and then I have to scale it up a little bit. Now this doesn't need to be perfect at this point. This is just a reference image where we will create our form model. But the point is, is to get this image in approximately the right location. Now let's just stop and explain something real quick. Why do we have to use 2D images in order to create a 3D model? Well, just think about this. As a little child is learning how to draw pictures, we don't expect them to just have a white piece of paper and then draw something amazing from that. No, it takes time. Oftentimes, the way that we teach little children is we'll give them sketching paper. So they'll have an image behind it, a simple image. They'll have the sketching paper on top. And from there, they'll be able to trace out their design and make it very pretty in a very short time. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. You as starting off with forms or T-spines, you cannot be expected to create something absolutely incredible, perfect. No, you need to have something to sketch or something to trace or something to look at in order to model it. So that's what we do with these canvas images. So once it's lined up, we're gonna go okay. And now we're in a position where we can start creating our forms.
So let's hop on over into the form environment. As we click on that, you can see that all of our other tabs disappear and we just simply have form with all of the tools underneath in the toolbar. So like Fusion 360 in general, when we look at our toolbar, we have starting from left to right, we create and then we modify and then the rest of the tools have to do with the modifying process as well, or even the creation process. But basically we start with creating and then we modify what we created. So let's just talk really briefly about our create drop-down menu and our shortcuts here. We have what are called primitive shapes. The six most often used are in our toolbar shortcuts. Now, as we hover over create sketch, we can obviously create a sketch, which everyone is used to by now. You can create a box, you can create a plane, a cylinder, a quad ball, or a face. So for me, I would like to go to our right face here and think of this model as not just one form, but we're gonna create several forms or several bodies and then join them together later. So I'm gonna divide this piggy bank into a few different bodies. I'm gonna create the main body here and that will use a quad ball. Then I'll also create the feet, the snout and the ears, all using the box primitive. I'll also create the eyes using the quad ball. And then lastly, with the tail, we will use cylinder to create that. So let's get into it. Quad ball. Here we will pick a face and we'll specify the center point for it. Now I'll just select the origin and there is our quad ball. Now we can adjust the diameter of it and I'm just going to adjust it so it's approximately in the right location. Let's just keep it a little bit smaller just for the sake of learning these new techniques. Now, if we go to our home position here, we can see that there our quad ball envelops both of those canvas images. So let's just focus on how to change this quad ball a little bit so it's more functional for our design. We can change the span faces. So what do you notice as I increase the span faces one by one? Well, we get more and more faces to work with. So here's a common mistake from all new learners, and it's this. Most think that the more span faces, the better. But in reality, the better that you get, you come to understand fully that the fewer faces is better. So let's just go down to two span faces. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is symmetry. And here, when we look at the piggy bank, we can note that one side of the piggy bank is exactly the same as the other. The left side and the right side are going to be the same. Obviously, the front and the back are not the same. So we can't make those symmetric, but we can say that everything on the left side, and when I say left side, I'm talking about the left side of the piggy bank, which is looking at it like that. So I'm thinking in 3D here, the left side of the piggy bank is the same as the right side. So we're going to set symmetry as mirror, and then we have options here, length, width, and height. So what do these refer to? Well, it all depends on what plane we originally selected. In our case, we selected the YZ plane. So length, width, and height depend on the plane that you select. If we selected our XY plane or our XZ plane, well, then these would change in definition. But if we're confused or we don't know which one to select, that's okay. Just select one at a time and see what is symmetric. So this is saying with the green line that the front is going to be the same as the back clearly not what we want. So let's exit out of that. Width symmetry. This is saying that the top hemisphere is the same as the bottom hemisphere. So we don't want that as well. We want height symmetry. Again, it is in this instance. So this is saying the left side is the same as the right. So let's click OK. Now for our first step, we're going to select the right face here and look directly at the left side of our piggy and the quad ball. Let's learn a few different things about how to modify this quad ball so that it takes on the shape of our piggy bank. To do that, we're gonna to go to modify. Let's just hover over that and you will learn a fundamental skill here when we read the information under edit form. There it says manipulates faces, edges, and vertices with transform, scale, and rotate editing. Select faces, edges, or vertices to enable the manipulator double click a face or edge to select a loop. So let's do that right away. Let's just select 
an edge. Once we do so, you can see that it turns yellow. And in fact, because we have symmetry on, it selects the opposite side. Anything we do to this edge, it will mirror to the other side. Now we can select a face as well. When we do so, the face turns blue. Our mirrored feature on the other side will turn yellow. And that means anything we do to this face, that face will be adjusted likewise. And we can also click on vertices to do the same thing. Now, if we go back to our right view here, we can actually move this quad ball a little bit by double clicking. You see, as I double click, it selects the entire quad ball. At this point, we can go modify or right click, edit form. It's the exact same thing. This shortcut up here is not the modify, it's actually edit form. The modify refers to the drop down menu. So we're gonna double click the quad ball, right click, edit form. And here we can actually move the quad ball into proper location. So let's do that. And this is gonna be all approximate right here. Now I would like to make this quad ball scale or grow a little bit to fill out the back and the front sides of the piggy bank. Now we could use this scaler right here, but as you see, when I rotate our quad ball, we actually have three of those exact same scalers. This will scale it in our YZ direction. This will scale it in our XZ direction. And this will scale it in our XY direction. So you can control each direction of scaling. But in, in our instance, we're just gonna go cancel, I'm gonna go back in time here so that we've got our round quad ball again. Let's go back one more, there we go. Now I'm gonna double click, we're gonna right click edit form. Now you'll notice instead of clicking that two directional scaling bar, we're gonna select the middle and this will scale it in all directions. So as you can see, I've clicked it and I can move it down and to the left to go bigger and in and to the right to go smaller down, left, bigger, up and right to go smaller. And I just like to make it so it's approximately the same size as our piggy bank. So there we go. Excellent, let's make it a touch bigger. Excellent. Now what I'd like to do is manipulate the top surface here so that it's in line with the top of our piggy bank. Now to do that, I'm just going to select, well, let's go okay first. Then I can select that vertice and edit form. Now we can grab the arrow. Now the arrow actually snaps or adjusts incrementally. So you can see there as I move it up and down, it adjusts 0.1 inches at a time. If I grab the square here, we have kind of a free form movement where it's not uh, defined by increments. Great, as you can see, I've put it in line with the top of our piggy bank there. How about this vertice as well? That can move out a little bit. So I'm gonna grab that and as you can see, I have full control over that form. Let's do the front as well. I'll grab that vertice and move it out just a little bit. And again, the goal here is to take the quad ball and adjust it to the basic shape of our piggy bank. Let's do that here too. Perfect, I'll probably move this in a little bit as well, right there. And then this vertice I can move out. Let's go okay. So from our right view here, we can see that it is a basic shape of the side image of our piggy bank. Now let's go to our front view. You can see that this needs some manipulating too. And remember that we've got symmetry on, so if we adjust this side, well, the other side will be adjusted correspondingly. So let's select that vertice. Let's right click, edit form, and we can move that. Do you see the left side moves along with the right side? So let's just adjust that. Now I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I'd probably change is it seems to be a little bit high, but remember we're working with two different images here. So our quad ball lines up with the side image, but not necessarily the front image, and that's okay. We're gonna make fine adjustments later on, but we just wanna have the basic shape here. So let's go okay. And would you look at that, if we hide our canvases, there is the basic shape of our piggy bank. Check out our next tutorial in this series to learn the next steps in your quest of learning form modeling. See you then.